we are shooting basically the story of dock to dish. So we are showing the process of what it is to, uh, to go out and fish and to acquire that, get onto the boat, go to market, and then have that delivery sent to restaurant and have it prepared for plating. There's something beautiful about this, right? That there are so many people who are a part of this very seemingly simple thing that we take for granted every day. It was a mix of documentary and sort of a commercial approach. We sort of set aside some ideas to definitely capture very specific kinds of shots that we wanted, but then we left a lot of open space for us to catch very natural uh, things happening in front of us. When I shoot this kind of a project, I am looking for a camera that gives me uh, a lot of functionality, um, versatility in its image, and some stability in knowing that when I go to post, I can, I can push it wherever I need to, almost regardless of whatever environment I was in during production. I feel like my job as a director is to capture and bring as much into post, as many tools uh, for my editor to work with, uh, as I can possibly compile in the time that's allotted. The C200 performed very well for us. The uh, fact that you can do Canon's raw light format internally on the C200 is a huge value because you don't have to worry about any external peripherals. You're not worrying about powering another unit. It's not hanging off of the camera or it's not somewhere else another thing to worry about. It's just all built in. The C200 really allows me to be flexible in the field. It allows me to do a lot in a short amount of time. For us, what we're trying to do and what I've been trying to do over the last few years is strike that balance. How can we, as we go out into the field, bring tools with us that allow us to be beautiful at times, but also don't weigh us down so much that we're not able to be flexible. The C200 really does bring that idea to fruition for us. We have that flexibility. We have two C200 bodies. Our ACAM was on an easy rig, and uh, we have it kitted out with a 17 to 120. And uh, our B-CAM is uh, running off of an Artemis Maxima. The C200, uh, given its compact size, really fits perfectly inside the gimbal here. So it was a, it was a successful mission today, I think. And on the boat, we tried to do something interesting and uh, stick it onto a suction mount. And what was nice about that was, in its small form factor, I didn't have to worry about too much of the weight or anything swaying. I was able to strip the camera down, throw a 14 mil cine lens onto it, stabilize it at a few points with a suction mount, and it worked really well for us. That alone speaks to the versatility of the camera, being able to jump into any one of these configurations and just simply work. We were able to utilize the dual pixel autofocus. When we had the camera on the Artemis Maxima, we were able to have the 18 to 80 on that for a lot of follow shots. And to be able to set that lens to go into autofocus was, was kind of a dream because we didn't have to deal with any kind of uh, follow motors or a follow focus system or setting up another monitor for the AC to pull focus. I do like that uh, what we got today, especially being on a boat and the stabilization on that, it's a really big test. Being able to do that paired with the Canon, uh, the new Canon C200 is, is cool. Canon C200 shoots to CFast cards and we're able to capture the new Canon RAW Lite, uh, which comes in as a individual CRM file, which is much more convenient to handle. And we're inside my DIT van, where they bring in the media and bring it into my machine, copy it to Direction Drive, Master Drive, and then my working RAID. And then from there, we take it into the Canon RAW developer software, which does the debayering into ProRes uh, for, for the post workflow. The new Canon Raw light just gives you much more flexibility uh, on set as well as later on in the post workflow. Being able to see what we're shooting in almost real time uh, on the Canon display, uh, seeing it in HDR, is 
priceless. Seeing how the light pierces through the fog there, that's, that's really cool. What I actually liked about being able to shoot 4K raw internal was that I could almost set it at 800 and forget it. I didn't need to fluctuate between the ISOs very much because 800 is, a, is, is the sweet spot for that camera. And it gave me the most range uh, that that camera can offer. There were particular moments where we would bump up to about 1600, maybe 2000 in the very early mornings, like when we went out on the dock. But even then, there wasn't a lot of noise in the image, especially going out to the 2420, we were able to see it projected to us in an HDR signal. When we were on the boat, and then in a few other scenarios, we were able to switch into 59.94 at 4K, still shooting raw, and knowing later on we were able to, in post, slow that down and get a nice high-speed shot. When we set up for what's ultimately a static master of our chef preparing the meal, we said to Chef Tim, you know, where would you normally stand for this? And he wanted to stand right in front of the fire. We realized that was an opportunity and not a challenge. I think the biggest surprise to me was the amount of highlight handling that I had. And so we positioned him perfectly next to the flame on one side, next to the white tiles on the other side, all of his beautiful food in front of him. We rolled the camera for about 15 minutes and said, go. My name is Dante Pasquinelli. And I'm Matt Masha. We just finished coloring Doc to Dish at Outpost Digital. Footage was great. We, we got raw from the camera sensor, and we were able to transcode that into an open EXR format, which gave us 16 bits of latitude. And accomplishing the grade that he wanted was very easy because of that range. This stuff looks great. Andrew likes uh, things to be very realistic. He likes to keep the realism of the story. So throughout the piece, we tried to stay true to the world that the characters were in. We work in ACES, so starting with the open EXRs, we bring those in and very happy with how the grade turned out. We were able to get a really rich grade and sort of follow the fish, which is what the film is about. We acquired the footage from a Canon camera and we're now grading on the Canon 2420 uh, HDR reference monitor. We all have different Frankenstein combinations of gear that we like to use. Because of the nature of this assignment, we're of course using all Canon gear. It makes you realize how well all those pieces actually work together. Um, they actually do complement each other. There is synergy by putting Canon lenses on a Canon camera and watching it on a Canon display um, moments after you've captured it. And so that workflow in the field, I think, was really great for us. It's almost like cheating. Honestly, it gets people excited.